Hello everyone, welcome to data and information management. This is first lecture and we want to introduce some basic definition of the relational database, data and information management. So let's get start the lecture by introducing some of the basic definitions. The first definition is the data. The data is a stored representation of the meaningful objects and the events. So anything that has a meaning, we can store it as a data. We classify the data as a structured versus unstructured. So the structured data could be numbers, text, dates, and so on. And the unstructured data could be image, videos, and maps, and those kind of stuff that uh, we have. So you may hear a lot about the data and information. Basically, these definitions are relative and uh, there is no absolute boundaries but basically information is processed data whenever you do some manipulation some change on the data you get you provide information so any basic understanding anything that uh, you can derive from the data is a uh, information for example when you get the average of data uh, it's kind of information but uh, any process that you do over the data is uh, pro that provides the knowledge, it converts the data to the information. The next term that we have is a database. Basically, database, database is an organized collection of the data. Uh, organized here is very important. Um, because data is very, uh, for example, you think about the Walmart, they have multiple cashiers and they are selling items 24-7 uh, days and uh, they have a lot of the customers. And uh, they record everything. For example, how wh what kind of item they are selling to each customer and how much is the total. So this kind of the database, they have to be very efficient to be able to use them. For example, you when you scan an item, the price should pop up very uh, in a matter of the second. Uh, otherwise, you may um, lose your interest to buy the item if you wait in the line for 10 minutes just to see the price of the item. So database should be very efficient. So in the database, we store the data in the tables. These tables are connected to each other. Uh, at the end of the le this lecture, you will understand how these tables are connected. You will get very good feeling about how uh, this database are created and we know that each table has a rows and the columns we will define the meaning of these rows and columns and how we can create this so so far you just have a basic definition of the data the difference between the data and information and database which is a collection of the tables uh, or collection of the data that the, these data are stored in a tables. Now, let's have an example of the data. We have a figure here that represent a class roster for a specific course. It's a management 500. The, the course name is management 500. Uh, business policy uh, which has been offered in the spring 2015 and the course section is uh, 2 we have a bunch of the columns here you can see there is a name there is an ID there is a major and GPA you can see the name represent the name of the students they are taking this class and the ID represent them 
uh, either the students and the major represent the major of each student and then the column GPA represent the GPA of the student you can see this is uh, very clear when you look at this data you understand that we have couple of students we have six students they have registered for this course and uh, this is very clean now when you uh, when you see this by example you can understand what's the meaning of ID uh, for example you can see the ID has a uh, nine digit numbers all of them are numbers and that has a uh, nine digit for someone who does not know the data or this table, we have to have a clear definition. Otherwise, they may enter social security number as the ID of the student. So, in a database, everything should be clear to everybody. <clears throat> One way to make this kind of the clarification is uh, providing a metadata. Metadata is the description of the all of the data all of the context that we use in the tables so we have to provide what's the concept that we are using what's the explanation that we have for each element that we are using for example in the previous example the course that the data that we have to provide for them it's a uh, alpha numeric so there is a letter and the numbers together the length of this column course can be 30 uh, there is not minimum and maximum so this under this course under this for this course we have to provide the course ID and name as an another example the section the type of the section is integer and its length is 1 and the minimum value that it can take is 1 and the maximum value is 9 and it represents the section number so you can see for each of the elements that we have inside of the previous table or previous figure that we have everything should be clear and everyone should be able to understand it so metadata is uh, uh, plays a role to clarify that what do we mean by each item that we have in the table so every column of the table should be described in the metadata so we have one term called database management system or DBMS the database management so database management system is a software that uh, connect work as a connection between the user and the database it can create the tables it can create insert the information to the database or basically we are controlling the database using a dbms so the example of the dbms could be mysql uh, microsoft access sql lead and other kind of a software that you can search and find them so any software that uh, control the database we can call that DBMS so database management system so here we have a figure there is a user and uh, there is a DBMS and the database as we just define the database database is the collection of the tables so we have bunch of tables inside of the DBMS uh, inside of the database then we have a DBMS that controls the database so anything that you want to do to the database you have to go through the DPMS if you want to insert new tables or if you want to create a new table or you want to insert new information to the data to the tables inside of the database you have to use the DPMS now user uh, you they have to use some specific language that uh, we call it uh, SQL query uh, SQL uh, they write it as a SQL that is 
that means structured query language and uh, you we will define this term later but basically this is a way of the communicating to the DBMS so we are writing some kind of the programs uh, in term of the queries basically queries are our codes in the SQL language that we do provide to the DBMS and then DBMS uh, does the task for us you will get familiar with the SQL query in this course so whole topic of this course is gonna be about how to write the queries queries are basically short quotes that we write and the DBMS translated into the machine language and does the task that we are asking from the uh, DBMS for example if you want to insert new record or new rows to the tables we have to follow some standard that uh, SQL provide us and then DBMS is going to understand that and uh, is going to insert new row to the table that we have inside of the database don't worry about the detail because whole semester we are going to talk about the SQL query and how we can write the uh, queries so we have a user we have a DBMS and we have a database so whenever we want to do any change on the database and the tables and the information inside of the database we have to use DBMS so the we have basically we have to write the SQL queries that DBMS understand and translate it so he, here in this course we talk about the relational database we have different type of the database but the focus of this course is relational database so in the relational database data are organized in tables and these tables they have connected to each other so these connections that uh, we, have, we will talk in a moment about this connection but each tables they are connected so we can track the information and uh, so the focus of this course is the relational database and the data are organized in the set of the tables that these tables are connected to each others we will show how this ta these tables are connected in this lecture uh, basically we use databases in two ways most of them most of the time one of them is a uh, operational databases that we use daily day-to-day -day operations for example in a store in the uh, for example in the Walmart every sales that we do is uh, recorded in the database so that is a uh, day-to-day -day operations are stored in the database and the information inside of the operational database are changed in a minute they are changing uh, at each you know they are the data that we have they are changing but in another type of the database that we have is a analytical database that they are record historical data and they do not change much the information that we have inside of the this kind of database they are uh, static static they don't change much so it doesn't matter what kind of the database that we have it's operational database or analytical database in this course we are talking about only relational databases the database that they organize the table data in, in in a tables and tables are connected through a uh, what we call keys so in a moment we we will talk about the keys and how these tables are connected uh, you have seen when we talk about the tables inside of the 
databases these tables represent what we call as a relation or entity entity is a name that we use to describe a person place object or concept that organization wants to store information for example the example of the person uh, entity of the person can be student employee customer and patient so depending on the organization that we are dealing with we may have few of this for example in the university we have uh, students faculties employees and so on and also we can have a example of the places are store warehouse and so on and we can have objects like a machine building and so on and concept like account or the course so these are the example of the entities that we can have for each kind of the uh, data type each kind of object or event that we are interested in the organization to keep the information about these items we know each table has a rules and the columns in the database in the relational database that's also true that we have each each table has a row and a column but here the columns are uh, columns of the tables represent properties of the attributes uh, properties of the entities so for example here we have table of the customers and it has customer uh, seven columns first column is the customer ID the next one is the first name last name street address CD state and zip code so these columns represent some properties of the customers so they are helping to describe the customers so we are for each customer we have the id we have a first name last name address and so on sometimes these columns are called fields or attributes of the entity so tables represent the entities or relations in the day in the database and the columns are called fields that they represent the properties of the entity these properties sometimes we call attributes so attributes or properties are same basically each column represent a property or attribute of the entity now you can see there is some rows in the tables each rows we call record in the database so here we have six customers customer 10 customer with customers ID of the 1010 is Angel his first name and uh, her first name and then we have last name of the Kennedy here she has the address, she has a CD and state and zip code. So each record or the rows in the table is a sample of the entity or sample of the sample of the entity that all of the columns has been filled. Most most of the time each column need to ha have a value but some of them some of the columns are optional we will talk more about the data type later but you can see each table has a row and a column columns represent the attributes of the property for example a customer has a first name first name called one attribute or one property and it has a last name last name is another attribute or property of the customer and then we have a rows rows are the records or the sample of the entities that we have so we have a fields and records that uh, so each table is made of the records and 
fields. Now, you can see there is uh, in the data in this table that we have there is no duplicated rows. None of the rows is duplicated. This is a beauty of the relational database that we do not have any duplicated row or in another term we do not have any data redundancy so anything that we have here is a required and it has been kept in the minimum number of the data that we need so we don't have any extra thing anything if you drop here you will have a missing information so this is the beauty of the relational database that we do not have any duplicate information everything is a needed information you see uh, records that we have inside of the tables most of the attributes should have a value the type of their data is different so we will talk about the data type but attribute itself they can be grouped into multiple categories some of the attributes we call them required some of them we call it optional required attributes are those attributes that they should have a value for example in the previous table of the customers the first name and last name and the customer id are required but we can have leave the address empty but having them is better but those are uh, can be uh, empty but first name last name and customer id those are the required we have to have them we have a simple versus composite attribute the composite attribute is the attributes that it has multi-part uh, multi-component attributes so yeah, that means we still can have a we can break down into several parts that each part has a unique meaning it's a meaningful part for example here we can break down the street and then the street num the address number so each each of them can have a unique number it it has a meaning so this has a composite and then we have a single value versus multi value attribute single value is the one that can have just one value but multi-value attribute has it can have multiple values for example the skill of the employees they may be expert in the total quality management they can be expert in the project management or PMP or, so they can have multiple skills uh, we can type them all in one field that that field becomes a multi-valued attribute then we have a stored versus derived attribute the derived attribute means that we can calculate from some of the other fields that we have or other columns that we have inside of the table for example the age of a person we can get it from the date of the birth of the person right so if we have a column that records the data date of the birth of the person we can create another table another column and find the age of the person so the age column becomes a drive attribute so let's back to the previous table that we had the table of the customers it has customer id first name last name street address city state and zip code as the columns here one of the columns is very important that column is 
customer ID we call this uh, for example here if we want to just represent one information one data that we can identify each of these rows uniquely customer ID is the one that we can use it for example if I say who is customer 1010 we can immediately identify this customer or when I say who is customer 1012 we can easily identify it so uh, when I say 1012 we just brought up one record one row from table we do not bring up multiple rows so we call this as a key or identify, identifier so key or identifier is an attribute that we can uniquely identify individual person from the table that we have the property of the identifier is that it cannot be null or null in computer science means empty basically we cannot leave blank this field the identifier should have a value so sometimes this identifier we call it as a primary key on the table so we are creating we are getting to the point that how the tables in the relational database are connected so remember the primary key is a field or the column or attributes that we can get each row uniquely so each, once we have the identifier we can identify a single row in a table so that's a very good property that we can use it so remember this primary key there are some criteria for selecting the identifier first of all it, the value of the identifier should not change over time so it should be stay fixed for all the time for example the SSN or social security number of the person does not change or vehicle identifier number or a VIN number does not change all of them are uniquely con they are constant and we can use them as a identifier so they have that they do not change another property of the identifier is that they cannot be null null value null or empty basically null means we do not have any value for them uh, so these are the very important properties also we uh, is we cannot use uh, intelligent identifier like the location or the people that they change anything that it has a possibility possibility of the change we should ignore that so sometimes if the keys are complex just replace them by a new one a new and simple one just create a id for example for example if you have a student id or campus wide id that has been created for you when you are registering in the course when you register for the campus you are, you are given a unique number while you have a unique number of the ssn because uh, because of the some security problems and because it may bring up some security issues those kind of stuff we are using the campus wide id is uh, uh, less sensitive and we can uh, that easily we can share with the uh, you know with faculties and so with other st staff in the university so we can have different kind of the identifier but 
we have to choose the one that is works best for us so these are the criteria that also we have to consider should not change they cannot be null and uh, they should not use an intelligent identifier the next one is that each tables they have a uh, they may be related to other tables or they may have a relations that means the tables are, or the entities they may share some data or they may are they may uh, collected to each other for example you are taking some courses these courses are offered by some faculty so you as a student you are one entity courses are another entity and faculties are another entity so here we have three entities they are connected through each other faculty offer a courses and you take the courses as a student so there is a connection between the course and the student also there is a connection between the course and the faculty so once to show the relation of this entity we use something called entity relationship diagrams or ERD ERD is basically conceptual model of the business model that we have inside of the organization for example in the campus we have faculties they offer a course we have a students that they take a course so there is a three entities and two of them uh, course and students course and faculties are they are related so this is very simple model of the university but you can have more uh, more and more entities and make it more complex to address all the activity of the businesses that we have inside of the university if you want to show the type of the relationships we have three main categories we have one one to one one to many and many to many uh, let's have uh, more focus on each type of the relationship that we have one to one remember first of all each entity can be converted to a table and this conversion is not uh, we have a process of the converting ERD to a tables but there is a one step between this conversion that we skip that's not the interest of our course but if you are interested you can search online and uh, search normalization so th th three nf normalization that's the process that we group some of the entities or we break down some of the entities to more entities but that's not required for this course so the first type of the relation that we have is a one-to-one -one. Here we have two entities, entity A and entity B, that each of these entities are can be converted to a tables. So we have tab one table for A, one table for B. In the one-to-one -one relation, each row of the table A is related to only one row of table B, table B and each row of table B is related to only one row of table A. The example is each employee has one job description. Uh, so that's uh, one example that we can have. The next type of the relation is one to many. Here we have two, again we have two entities, entity A and B. Entity A is, you can see there is a, when close to B, 
we have three branches like a fork so this means one to many this side is one the side of the A is one the side of the B is many so here it means that each row of table A may be connected to one or more rows of the table B but any rows of the table B is connected or related to only one row in table A so from A to B any row of the A may be connected or related to one or many rows in the B but each row of the B is only connected to one row of A for example A can be a customer B can be a orders so each customer can have multiple orders now the last type of the relationship that we have is a many to many in the many is the extension of the one to many so both sides can be related each row in bo both sides can be related to one or more rows in the another side in the database management or basically when we have a one many to many relation we create a new table between these two and we call it linkage table and this many to many is uh, converted into one two one to many relations so here c is a linkage table and we added one to many from a to c and here from b to c one to many so this is simplified <coughs> so and then we know how to do uh, how to interpret a to c and c to b or b to c so these are the three type of the relation that we can have and the next one is the optional or mandatory relationship if the relationship is required or mandatory we use a hatch sign you can see there is a fork and hatch the first one represents the mandatory and the next one shows uh, is it one to one, one to many, or uh, many to many? But if, if it's optional, we just show the circle. So we have a circle for the optional, we have a hatch for the mandatory. Here we have another example. We have two entities entity of the patient and the patient visit, and that's uh, one to one one to many but both sides is required or mandatory a patient can have one or more visits so this is how we can interpret it so the, each patient can have one or more visits here we have three patients Mark, Sarah and uh, Elsa each of them Mark and Elisa has a one visit but Sarah has a two visits so this is one to many here this meaning of the many is that anything more than one so it doesn't matter it's 200 millions but anything more than one can be interpreted many also we have another example here we have uh, two tables or two entities agents and entertainer you can see the agents agent id in the table of the agents is a primary key and it has uh, other columns like the agent first name last name the date that they has been the agent has been hired and so on and then we have the entertainers each entertainer has an entertainer ID that's the primary key on the table and then you can see the agent ID again has been repeated here so as a 
and you can see there is a flash sign and it says foreign key so we have not introduced this foreign key but <coughs> you can see agent ID is uh, repeated in both in both places one in the agent table another one in the entertainer and we know that agent ID is the primary key of the another table basically foreign key is the primary key of the another table that is sitting in another table for example that means agent is a primary key here but we are using in this table so here it's a foreign key so this is how we connect two tables but don't worry about it we will talk more about it. Here we have agents ID 1, 2, 3, so we have 3 agents and you can see agent ID has been repeated 1 in the first row of the entertainers but you can see the agent ID has been repeated 3 times so that this means the relation of the agents and entertainer is 1 to many this based on the this tables you can see three has been repeated uh, twice here so that means the relation between the agent the entity of the agents and entertainer at least is one to many and then we have optional again one we have one more example here the relation is many to many one side is mandatory the another side is optional for example here we have the entity of the employees we have entity of the project here we have bunch of the project bunch of the employees and bunch of the projects you can see uh, some of the pro each project has been assigned to at least one or many so if you want to interpret these entities, we read this way. We say employees may, because this is optional, be assigned to one or many projects. And because this sign is required, we interpret this project is assigned to one or many employees. So that means we do not have any project without any employee that are working on it but we may have employees that they are not working on any project here we have the examples we have five people they have five employees we have two employees that they are not working on any project but we cannot find any project that no one is working on so every project has at this one employees working on so the next concept is how we translate ERD to a database we start by a simple case which is by one to many case that's the easy to understand here we have two entities, entity of the customers and the orders. Each of them has some attributes. You can see in the entity of the customers, customer ID is underlined and it's bold. This means customer ID is the primary key of the customers or identifier of the customers. From order entity we can see order id is underlined and it's bold again this means that order id is a primary key now we before said that each entity is converted to tables so we create two tables the table of the customers and the table of the orders the columns of the customer table is customer ID as a primary key then we have a customer name we have a customer address and we have a postal code so the table of the customer has a four columns 
and then one table for the order the order has two row, two columns order id and order date and we add one more column to order the name of this new column is customer id that means why customer id the customer id is a primary key of this customer and then we move or copy to the order so any order that we have has a id and the customer that has order so the customer id that we use it in the order becomes foreign key so why we do not move order to customer because uh, each customer may have multiple orders so that means we are just repeating this all information customer name address postal code for each order but if we just copy here we have any any information about the order we add just one more column that is a customer order so we do not create any redundancy or duplication of the information so anything that we have just manage by adding one more column so when we have one too many move or copy basically copy the primary key on the one side this side is one right so we copy the primary key into this one that has a many side so we create two tables we copy all the attributes of the entities but just we copy the primary key of the this side to this side in case of the one to one uh, if there is optional one side is optional one side is mandatory move the primary key of the mandatory side to the optional side if both sides are optional or both sides are mandatory it doesn't matter you can deal it in in case of the many to many we create a linkage table and uh, <coughs> we convert it into two relation of the one to many and then we for each one we can uh, uh, each of this uh, here for example the example that we have the primary key of the B and the primary key of the A both comes to the C so here we have two foreign keys when we have the many to many so that's the difference now we covered how to create the database now we have to implement and write it in the computer so we understand the basic concept the next concept is how to implement this in the computer to do this we use sql sql that stands for the structured query language is a standard standard language that we can communicate to the database so we have a SQL or SQL that we pronounce it as a SQL is a standard and we have some application or software that they implement this standard like the Microsoft Access or Microsoft SQL Server or MySQL that we use MySQL Workbench in this course we use them to write the, to create a database to create a table to write the information and so on so we in the next lecture we introduce how to make our database sound how to name the columns how to uh, create a data, clean and a sound database and then also we introduce some basic uh, mysql workbench syntaxes how you can start writing it the sql code so thank you for watching bye